Welcome in. It's the Positively Petland Show, AM 800 KXIC. I'm Jay Caper, and we have Ron Salzer here with Petland of Iowa City. And we have a Shih Tzu and a Shih Tzu. Shih Tzu? Yes. Shih Tzu Poodle. Wow. Okay. It's a mouthful. Yes. It's a lot of sheep poo. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> hold on. Keep it clean. We're going to have to get the seven-second delay on here just to make sure we don't say anything we're not supposed to say here. They're very, very cute dogs here at the studio running around. You can check out uh, Facebook page and KXIC.com if you want to see a photo of the sheep poo specifically. But that's not the breed of the week. We're going to go a little different direction for the breed of the week. You brought that book again, uh, a nice book, a big, thick, thousand-page color book that you've found on the different breeds um yeah. where you got it from a trade show akc akc yeah it's i, I love how when books are are labeled the new mm -hmm. <laughs> complete dog book 21st edition akc and it just goes over breed standards and stuff it still is fairly light on each breed but it goes into some nice detail and so that's what we're bringing to the show yeah and this uh, particular year we've decided that we're going to try to dive into a few more breeds that we haven't done in the past uh, maybe even breeds that aren't at the store but just to kind of add some flavor to the show uh, we've repeated a few different breeds over the years i know and so i'm sure we'll do some of that again um, more some of the more popular breeds but it might be fun to learn about some breeds that we haven't touched on in the past too just to get an idea dogs that are out there and uh this particular breed you do have though we have one of the uh the breed right i have one in the store and right what now. is it a fawn bull mastiff a bull mastiff okay so those so, are big dogs, yeah right? yeah everything about that name says big big so yeah what bull color mastiff fawn is, yes okay. fawn bull mastiff okay so i i want to check that one out i love big dogs I don't know if I'll ever get one that big, but uh, those are beautiful dogs, and we'll talk more about that. Uh, also, what, what's the rest of the show? What else? Getting you ready for springtime. Okay. And so we're going to look on the fun side of things, so the toys and stuff like that. Hey, make sure you get this. Make sure you get that kind of a thing. But then also look on the maintenance side of things. So it's kind of like you, know, you spru spruce your yard up. Hey, spruce the dog up because you remember – Flea and Tick is right around the corner. So we're going to have some reminders of, hey, make sure you do this, get that done, and all that kind of a thing. And then our food of the week is Stella and Chewy's. We've talked about it in the past. And this is what we call a meal mixer. So nobody's saying, uh, although you could, uh, switch all over to Stella and Chewy's. But you, what you can do is add, you know, you hear about those dehydrated or freeze-dried foods and how they're supposed to be so good for your dog. You can introduce those into your dog's diet on a daily basis, part of the, just as a meal mixer. And we'll talk about that and the benefits of that. Nice. I like it. All right. Well, we'll get to all those different topics. And uh, first, though, we need to get you the amazing pet story of the week. Big voice guy. Here he is. It's time for the amazing he was pet like story scouting. of the week. You heard us talk about the whole mastiff. He was getting afraid. Yeah. Big and all that he kind of stuff. He peeked around the corner to make sure the mastiff wasn't in here. It's just a puppy, big voice guy. Don't be it's not afraid. Even in here. <laughs> Thank you he gave for. Gave us the stink guy on, on the way out on that one. <laughs> we called him out. <laughs> yeah, wimp. All right. So now it's time to tell you about the amazing pet story of the week. This one's cool. I've been doing a little research to find out where. This is at, and I couldn't find uh, which state uh, this is at, but it's in somewhere in the United States uh, where this has taken place, and it's the story of Luke and Jedi. And uh, Luke, I, and you know, we talk about the amazing things that animals do. We talk about service dogs. We talk about the dogs that help out finding drugs. We talk. Oh, there we go. Los Angeles is where this is at. So good. Uh, so now I can at least tell you where we're going for the story today. It is Los Angeles. And so we talk about these dogs that do amazing things. Well, I didn't realize there's a dog that is purposely trained, specifically trained as a diabetic alert dog, a DAD. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And they can sense when a blood sugar is low. And so they, the, the way they do this, they say they're similar to bomb sniffing dogs. But uh, when the, when the, child or person has low levels the dog brings a br a bringsel which is a device used to signal the need for uh the diabetic or someone to check the blood sugar and it bows and then when he has high blood blood levels jedi brings the device and waves uh, his paw so he, he's been trained that when the when the blood sugar is low when the blood sugar is high well the blood sugars uh, everybody was asleep in the house at two years old uh, little luke 
was uh, f fast asleep, and so were all the the people. Luke Nuttall in Los Angeles. Everybody's asleep in the house, and the blood sugar plunged to a dangerously low level. The dog just started going crazy, and it woke everyone up. Jedi woke up the family. They checked the blood sugar. They did. They gave him the medication, and uh, saved his life. They say that uh, everyone probably would have slept through. Nobody would have known. And uh, it's all thanks to Jedi, the uh, the dog that can sniff whether or not uh, blood sugar is low or high. A diabetic alert dog. Who knew? It's a black lab. He's beautiful, and they are best of friends, from what they say. That's the amazing pet story of the week. I'm learning something every day. That's pretty cool stuff there. Nice to hear that they can help people that have diabetes, and they can get a diabetic alert dog who knew it is time for a break when we come back we're going to talk about the bull mastiff we'll talk about springtime and what you can do to get yourself ready for that with your pets and the food we're featuring is again, stella and chewy stella and chewy all right we'll be right back with more for this on kxic all right record a promo <clears throat> Ready to go? Mm -hmm. Okay. 800 KXIC Morning Host Jay Capron here with Ron Salzrud. What are we going to talk about on the Positively Petland Show? We're going to be talking about the big bull master. He's big. Is this the right breed for you? <laughs> We're also going to talk about getting your dog and cat ready for the springtime. We've got the flea and tick, but we also got the fun stuff going on. So getting them ready. And then Stella and Chewy's. It's the meal mixer. You can actually mix it in with your existing kibble, and it's incredibly fun. Nice. Mix it up, and your dog will be happy. We'll be right back. At, well, Mix it up and your dog will be happy. It's the Positively Petland Show, Sunday mornings at 9 and at KXIC.com. All right. Oh. Welcome back. It's the Positively Petland Show, AM 800 KXIC, Iowa City. We are moving along with the Positively Petland Show, having some fun. We just learned about a diabetic alert dog. Pretty cool stuff there. They can train dogs to do that. And we're going to move on to talk about the breed of the week. It's the Bull Mastiff, a very large, large dog. And How large? Very 100 large. 100 to 130 pounds. Whoa. Large. Large. But what's interesting, 24 to 27 inches at the shoulder, which is not like really, really tall. Yeah, it two, is tall. Two feet at the highest level there, 24. Yeah. Yeah. So these are big, girthy, you know, mm. dogs. They're a lot of meat to them. So stump, stump the J question. <laughs> where does the uh, bull mastiff origi originate from? Hmm. this if it's let's go with europe yes okay i've got the continent down let's go with uh germany yeah that's what i would think too yeah. wrong <laughs> <laughs> where is it england okay. and a uh, fascinating if i could read just a section of from akc sure this one uh they call it the game keepers night dog and I actually was like game keepers, you know, back in the what the early 19th century. What is that? What is that? They didn't have Nintendo yeah. back then. What are you talking about? So it says it reads in 19th century England before 
industrialization, the rural agrarian society was composed of large feudal estates surrounded by small tenant farms. So I'm just like picturing pastures and stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of yeah. farming communities with some small farms around it. It was the gamekeeper's duty to prevent the desperate and determined poachers from illegal illegally taking the wild <sighs> game <sighs> that roamed the landowner's property. So it was the gamekeeper's night dog. So the, <laughs> you're, the, you're the poacher coming up into that area. Oh, you know, this is almost like one of the kids movies like when the big dogs come slobbering around and rawr, rawr, yeah, yeah. and you like go ah and the robber like runs away kind of a thing wow. so it scared off the poachers and one of the uh because it was such a big dog it could hold a poacher down and a full-grown man until somebody could, showed him. yes but it was funny <laughs> is it doesn't hold him down and maul him no, it just holds them down mm. until somebody can get there. And I'm sure it's like, you know, barking and all that kind of stuff to get everything going. But it just was a cool story about the bull mastiff. And if you haven't gotten it already, the bull mastiff isn't a mean dog. It is just, it, it is a very family oriented dog. It's going to love the family. It's kind of a lazy dog. In fact, AKC rate, rate does rate it as an apartment is okay for this massive dog because it has low activity hmm. uh, so that is some really cool uh, just history of it um, requires little grooming uh, regular bathing nail clipping is about all that's required um, moderate exercise at best <laughs> is all you need to do um, and then uh, uh, they do say training it is a free spirited boundless love uh, <laughs> type dog and so they said training yeah you're gonna have to continuously remind this dog of you know sit stay calm and all that and all you do in that case is um, we have we have a dog kind of similar in that range in the range is we're always just saying a command the dog wants to be engaged is what, in, in our case and and in the bull mastiff it wants to be engaged and if you're just like romping around and giving it love okay it loves that but now it's kind of free, loose, fancy, free kind of a thing, and, and will do his own thing. So then you just bring it back and go, all right, you know, a big bull, bully, mm. set. <laughs> and, and so say, say a couple of commands, and you'll get him right back into, oh, that's right, I, I can't knock over the coffee table. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. So, so it's a nice way of keeping him in. Just always be training, you know, from time to time every day, and, and you'll keep this guy in control. So nice. that is the bull. Mastiff. And that time of recording, you have one of these. I have one bull mastiff right now. All right. That's Ron Salzer with Petland of Iowa City. This is the Positively Petland Show. And on to the show topic of springtime. It's on everybody's mind, let's face it. The warmer weather. I know that I've seen people out in the community walking their dogs a lot more. I've been outside a lot more. And it's just wonderful to start feeling like we're turning the corner. And so that's the topic today. It's springtime. How do people get ready for springtime? All right, so there's a couple of things. I got a, a basket full of stuff right here. Is that a bear trap? What is that? <laughs> yeah. Isn't it funny how they make pooper scoopers into That's this what that is, huh? Pooper scooper. Things. This is that, you know, extended arm when you pull the lever, you know, it opens and closes just like the shovel oh, on a, on a, so on you don't a even bulldozer. Have to, yeah, you don't even have to touch it. Then. Right. And what I find with these, they are convenient. They are nice. Uh, they do break, so, like you know, they last for a year or so, and then you know it's all dependent on you. Yeah. You got big poop, probably break a little quicker. No, I don't know. Um, it's how you use them, kind of thing. If you're batting them around, you know, these guys are plastic, and there's spring actuations in there, so there's a lot of things that can go wrong on them. But they are convenient. People love these things. And to give our listeners an idea, uh, it does look like um, like a piece of a construction equipment with the cl with the clamps. Uh, I don't know what I'm trying to think of what that's called. But, I am too. Uh, we got two people on the radio right now, not knowing what they want to say. Yeah, but it's got <laughs> it's got a, a squeeze. You could squeeze the handle and it it cl like, yeah, clamps. It's like the, a claw that comes yeah, down claw, and it picks it up. Clamps down on it, and then you could pick up the poop and put it in a bucket or bag a bag or, or yeah, or whatever. Right. So what I brought out though, so that's like a lot of people love that. I I totally get it. It's easy to use and all that. Yeah. I love the pooper scooper rake the rake i have so picture you know a, a longer handle you know you you're at one end and at the other end looks like a rake it's a long extended rake mm -hmm. and just picture it it goes down underneath the poop 
and picks up the poop when you lift it back up again. And now you can again throw it in the bucket, in the woods, wherever yep. you're throwing the poop. Um, the, what I love about this thing is, holy cow, is it durable. I have this in my at my house. It's 13 years old. I store it outside, mm. and it looks brand new. Really? You know, this mm. isn't the actual one. No. This is a new one. No, but it's a simple <laughs> rake, a simple metal rake. And, oh, yeah. And I, I remember when I had a dog, I had a rake, and then there was another little thing you There's another, yeah. rake it into. And that's a little yeah. more convenient. Again, that some of these this one is just brute force it works works really well yeah um the one that you're describing is yeah it's a like a shovel scoop yeah. but then it has a rake two different pieces yeah and you, you put the rake two it together. into that was that. always very effective yeah I that thought, works because yeah. it's that scoop that has on there is actually kind of a big scoop so you can get a lot of it in there before you have to yeah dump it somewhere that's an awesome one as well yeah do you have that one at the store too yeah we're we here why, what I'm bringing out are things that we're selling a ton of right now. And so we're constantly reordering them in our store because the people are running out with them. Okay. Um, another thing, grass saver biscuits. These are uh, products and there's biscuits, there's treats, there's liquids you can put in the water or over their food. They're all aiming for one thing. You know how when your dog pees on the grass and it turns brown after a week or two? Uh, that is just over fertilizing the lawn is what's happening there. And so there are biscuits and liquids and chews and so all sorts of things that you can feed your dog that will prevent that from happening. What's it, it, not everybody has this issue. Um, it's those that have dogs that tend to go in the same place or when they urinate, uh, they go all in one spot. Lady dogs tend to do this. They just squat and it goes all in one spot. One of the benefits I know when the, the male dogs lift their legs, the benefit of that is he's squirting it all over the place. And so he tends to not burn the lawn as much as the females do, but some of them do as well. So, well, and I had a male dog that didn't lift his leg, whatever reason he would just squat, you know, and then he, I don't know if his pee was extra, if his <laughs> urine was extra acidic or whatever it was, but he absolutely destroyed our lawn. There were, there were, um, patches everywhere yeah. and that was the first year we got them and i looked at our lawn and said that looks horrible and i didn't know about this product um so what i ended up doing is using the patch master stuff and just going out there and pat you know scraping up the area that he destroyed and then putting the patch master down watering it and trying to patch together the lawn but i would have loved a product like this i right. didn't realize there's a way to cut it off at the source, at the source. Yeah. and the the key thing with these grass saver type products that you're feeding to your dog is you got to do it year round. Everybody stops it in the winter time. Oh, well, yeah, the grass is not green. But think of that snow and, and just where they urinate will just sit there. And then when the spring season comes, the snow melts and it just plops it in there. And again, it'll start burning things. So this is something you want to do year round instead of just in the summer months. Um, if you haven't, just start it now and move forward in that. Um, we get good results off of this. I used to be like you where I was patching like half my yard. Now is a very small section that I do have to still spat, uh, patch up. I think it's more to do with we have to shovel our yard for mm -hmm. our little dogs. And wherever I've shoveled, you can actually see the path. So I think it's the extreme cold getting to the grass and mm -hmm. stuff like that and making a difference in there. So that is the grass saver product. So uh, pick that stuff up. It's really easy. You know what? You're probably giving your dog a treat anyways. Why not just give them one of these treats? And now you're going to save the grass as a result. Sure. So grass savers is a really good product. Um, another thing, flea and tick. Uh, I got to mention that was it? It's, I think it's now 10 to 15 years ago or more. Yeah, it was around more like 15 years ago. We didn't have these topical flea and tick products where you could, you know, put the little liquid on their the back by their shoulders and stuff like that. Mm. We didn't have it. The cleaning industry uh, had a booming business in controlling flea and ticks in your house. They, you, instead of controlling them on your dog, we controlled them in the house, which is like, go to the source, you know, if you could, but they didn't have these products back then. And so when uh, Ad Advantix came out and Frontline came out, that decimated that industry. That's how good they work. These things really do work. Um, and 
Sometimes people will go, well, I did it and this happened. Always, I always peel the onion. Uh, make sure you follow the directions. Um, if you have that dog that gets in the water a lot, yes, you are decreasing the amount of this product on your dog, but there's some other uh, tools that you can use to help even those dogs. One of the neat things that is happening right now, though, is Frontline has gone off patent, and we all love it when things go off patent uh, for the consumer side of things. And so now the generics are coming out that are just as powerful as Frontline and at a fraction of the cost. So we actually have big displays of this in our store right now of Zogard, which is a um, is an alternative to Frontline, but it's exactly the same product kind of a thing. Hmm. So it, the biggest thing, when in the past, when you found products that were cheaper than Frontline or Advantix, if you looked at the active ingredients, you would have known, you would have found that the ingredients were at a third of the dose. And every veterinarian that I talked to on that said they don't work as a result. So um, load up on uh, the your topical products, Zogard or Frontline or Advantix. Make sure you get going on that. We're down to ten to thirteen dollars per dose uh, on these things. That is incredibly inexpensive for the alternative, and that is thousands of dollars trying to get it out of your house. Let alone the uh, uncomfortableness of the dog itself uh, or cat, for that matter. Fleas and ticks are on their way too. And uh, soon enough, right? And and uh, I have an herbal version of all this kind of a thing so that if you are sensitive, if you have a dog or you are sensitive to these products, um, I have herbal uh, remedies for that as well that have good effect on it. I can't say that they're just as good, but they do have good uh, repelling at, uh, and people come back and say, hey, yeah, that got me through my problem. It kept the fleas off. It's always better to be on the front line of all these. Wow. Frontline, front, front line. Uh, rather right. than being, oh my gosh, now they're infested and now I have to dig out of this hole. That is a much difficult, much more difficult. It's not something, oh, well, then I'll just put it on now. It doesn't work that easy. You actually have to go a lot more aggressive to get those fleas off your dog. And holy cow, I hope they don't get into your house because that's all big can of worms that would just be open there. All right. So we talked about Picking up the yard, springtime. We talked about make sure you get your flea and tick. We talked about biscuits, get those into your dog so they don't burn the lawn. So sprucing up the dog a little bit more. That is uh, working on their teeth. Uh, the There are some really simple tools out there now that you can get that will allow your uh, dog to have really fresh breath. And that's, I think most people get it because the breath on a dog sometimes can get uh, nasty, but it's because of the bacteria that are growing in the mouth, and we're smelling the byproduct of that bacteria. If you can take care of that uh, bacteria, you can now take care of that breath. These, I have a couple of different brands, but they do the same thing. They actually go in there and they clean the plaque off the teeth over time. So these products work over time, so they're not harsh at all. It's actually a 30-day uh, ordeal. So you're going to, I have one that's a spray. You lift up the jowl, spray the teeth, and it'll then propagate through the rest of the teeth. The other one I have is a gel and it has kind of a, oh, a pointy little applicator that you stick into the jowl between the cheek and the teeth, give it a little squirt on both sides, and it does the same thing. It has similar uh, effects. Uh, they work really good, but holy cow, do they stop the bad breath. That is an incredible. And then if you couple those products with a toothbrush. And this is a, a specific toothbrush that uh, wraps around the teeth. So you're, you know how our toothbrushes are, what would you call it, two-dimensional? Mm -hmm. Because they can go back, you know, they only have those bristles that stick straight out. Picture a toothbrush that bristles stick out in all different directions yeah. so that when you go across the teeth, it's getting the top, both sides, and even when you go all the way to the back, it'll get the back. And so you're just, you're doing uh, a lot of work in a few strokes, which is what we want for dogs. Cause they're like, oh, I get this out of my mouth. I don't want it. You know, and they're <laughs> doing that kind of a thing. Use this toothbrush and you'll get it done a lot quicker. And the dog will go, thank you. <laughs> so, so that's a uh, high dental hygiene. And you know, on the getting the plaque off, I actually use these products on a regular basis because I have one dog that does get plaque on a lot. It's $300 plus she's got to be put under anesthesia. And we just found that if we do this on a regular basis, 
uh, we don't have to do that. So she went for, uh, was it seven years without a teeth cleaning? We said, okay, uh, I actually backed off a little bit and she got all plaqued up. We sent her in, got her all cleaned up. And now we've got, I, I use three approaches for dental hygiene and we can probably go through those on another day. Uh, but we, we now keep those teeth clean and she has nice fresh breath. So let's get into more fun stuff now. Fun stuff. All right. First, if you have not gotten your dog the tennis ball, that's going to last whether you have a chewer or not. I'm not. But I, we have tennis balls coming out of our ears in the store. That's a little one. Then. Yeah, look at these things. It's like they, the size of a golf out, ball. Even smaller. And uh, so we've got the balls all the way down to that size. Don't you want to play ball with the little Yorkie? Don't give that one to the Mastiff, though. No, no. This would be <laughs> <laughs> this would come out the other end fairly easily. <laughs> it's so small. So we have tennis balls of all sizes and this is a great time to get it because, you know, everything's on sale as far as the summer stuff goes. Those will last a while, though, huh? Yeah, these yeah. are here. Just, oh, yeah. Hey, it's not really a tennis ball. Yeah, that's tough. It's a yeah. much stronger toy, yeah. uh, you know, ball. It doesn't collapse like a tennis ball at all. And so these these will hold up. Um, for those strong chewers, you know, it'll last longer and all that. Mm -hmm. I always go get some cheap Frisbees yeah, because we've got cheap Frisbees in the store. And uh, so you can go play, and you and, and then don't be worried if they start chewing on it. I, I'm not saying let them chew on it because you do want to keep the frisbee for a little while, but get the frisbees out and have some fun. Oh, get those chuckets for the tennis balls, um, so that you can you can throw uh, it farther and not have throw, to yeah wear the wear dog out quicker yeah. than the uh, the dog will wear your arm out. Mm -hmm. um, here, this is this is kind of off topic a little bit, but That's it's a, a big treat. piece of meat. Have I brought this in yet? Uh, I think a long time ago. Okay, but. we're gonna get Jay's reaction because I look at it and it's a uh, it's a joint. Here, it is a hind hock knuckle, and uh, it's got a lot of meat on it, and it's like definitely that cooked look that dog you know treats have and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> And so big dog owners, they always come into the store and they're always kind of looking for that big thing for their big, you know, medium to big dog kind of thing. For you small dog owners, this would be hilarious for you to get it for your dog <laughs> because they would drag it around. Now we're going to get Jay's first reaction. I want you to hold this thing and give me your first reaction. It's, yeah, heavy. Heavy. Yeah, Holy yeah. cow. This is how, when people come in and I put it in their uh, hands, th their hand drops a yeah. foot and they go yeah. i had no idea it was going to be this heavy you it's, start to understand the marrow it's all the way foot it's full it is yeah. full and yeah. there's it's not meat hollowed and stuff out. around yeah. this thing this is a meal when you look wow at it. i bet a dog would love this it's got uh yeah it's got bone to it joint uh and meat uh, yeah. all over all that thing. sorts yeah. of fun stuff yeah. and so we fly through these things how much do you think here i know this is kind of like an info commercial how much would you pay for this Oh, it's got to be at least 20 bucks, I would think. Yeah, it, it, it's crazy. This is, I'm trying to give you a picture. You got to come into the store and tr and look at this stuff. Um, we just loaded up our next uh, next week order. We'll have 24 because we bought 12 on Monday. By Tuesday, there were only three left. Wow. So they're flying, and we'll get more and more, and we'll bulk up on them. Five forty nine, five dollars for that. Nine cents. Oh, wow. It's crazy. That, so I brought it out because it's, it's a fun thing. Yeah. It's so big, I would have figured it's way more than that. We've talked about the next product here is the Sporn Halter. And so do you have that dog that pulls, uh, uh, you know, and you're walking around, mm -hmm. come into our store. We'll actually put this on your dog while you're walking around the store and you will get to see the advantage of this product. It immediately stops your dog from pulling you. It doesn't train them to not do it, but it uses... Not necessarily like how you would slow down a horse, but think of that. You know how you pull on the reins? This There's nothing in the dog's mouth, but it actually pulls down on the neck portion gently. This is not, there is no harm or hurt at all in this product, but it works on that same principle where it pulls their neck down a little bit uh, with some, uh, some pulls that are padded and everything around the uh, armpits and everything when you pull up on the lead it pulls them down and then they don't pull mm -hmm. kind of thing it is genius it is simple and it works i haven't had a i haven't had somebody put this on their dog and go i don't like it they all go holy cow i go you know what 
you're welcome to walk around the store for 30 minutes mm -hmm. just to make sure this is the right thing for you. Yeah, and we had a lab that had the collar that would tighten up when he pulled, and all he would do is pull harder and then be like, ah, ah. he's mm -hmm. like trying to breathe, and he, it didn't stop him. It just he kept pulling on it, and right. so it didn't it, really work. What for you're him. describing is those choker chains with mm -hmm. the gentle uh, collars and then the prong ones that we've all seen. Um, those are, you need to be trained to use those products. So they don't just work. Mm -hmm. Those, you have to know how to use them because you just described how not to use it. Yeah. Um, you ha and, it, and it is something that, it, again, I can demonstrate it in the store. Um, there's classes on how to use them. So they do get a little bit more complicated. Um, they, uh, they do use a little bit of that pain reinforcement ac uh, activity on there, but it's not huge. If you ever see somebody using them, if they're using it like a fishing pole, like what you described right there, yeah. that that's wrong. Um, you're not getting any good effect over it. And yeah, all you're doing is hurting the dog. Um, uh, but most of the, the time, and in fact, if somebody's using a good, they're not even, you don't even see them use it mm -hmm. because they've already gone through the training program. It works. It's all at the front end of it. And then they continue to use it. That's a that's something I probably can't even describe over the radio because it is a very visual thing mm -hmm. on how to use that one properly. Okay. But if you need some help on that, you can talk to your veterinarian or come into our store. And then uh, I got two products. How much time do we have? Yeah, we're about time to talk about Still and Chewies, but you can get those two. Well, real we quick. talked about the Ferminator all the time. Hey, your dog is going through the shed right now, whether you know it right now, because it's getting warmer. This is a natural shedding time for those shedding dogs. there's the ferminator get the ferminator, the ferminator. It, has, it just made its appearance in the studio <laughs> and then lickety stick which is something that is just fun because this thing is like giving your dog a treat but it's a liquid picture a picture a roll-on a deodorant roll-on mm -hmm. that's the applicator and then but inside the liquid is a really intensively tasty treat and it smells really good to them so walking down the, the sidewalk, you can open this up, give them a lick because you're encouraging behavior, put the cat back on and put it back in your purse or your fanny pack or your, or, uh, or into your pocket. So nice. That is getting your dog ready. Lots for of great products. Summer. Yeah. Check out pet land of Iowa city, lower muscatine across from Lucky's, and they open up at to noon today. If you're yes, listening on Sunday, Sunday from noon until six, and then Monday through Saturday, we're open from 10 a.m. until 9 p.m. And then in a 30-second vignette, uh, if you have not tried Stella and Chewy's, this is just one of those really, really fun products. It is a freeze-dried kibble. And so it didn't cook out all the nutrients and all that kind of stuff. It's made with really, really good uh, ingredients, the whole cage-free and, and all that kind of a thing aspect. But it has, because it wasn't cooked so much as those others, uh, the kibble, and I'm not downplaying kibble right now because we eat cooked food all the time, but this is a nice way of getting some of those, pro those natural enzymes into your dog. And you will see some uh, benefits. <laughs> One of the big benefits is you're going to see your dog go crazy over this thing because it's very tasty. They like the taste. Oh, they them. love it. They'll eat it and go, holy cow, give me more, give me more. So you mix it into your kibble. Then, yeah, huh? I just throw a scoop in with my kibble and I actually decrease the kibble a little bit because this is also nutritious and the dog just eats it up. <laughs> Excuse me. And then it has all those antioxidants to help your dog. So if you're in that, you're one of those people that loves to get those antioxidants, the pre prebiotics and the probiotics and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. You're going to love what you're going to read about Stella and Chewy's. We have a big display of it. Just as you walk in our door to the left, you're going to see a big uh, display of all the different varieties that you have. Big bags and small bags so you can try it if you want or go large kind of a thing. So all right, Stella nice. and Chewy's. Stella and Chewy's. Meal mixer. Good deal. That is the uh, end of the show. That's the Paws of a Petland show on 800 KXIC and KXIC.com. Check it out. You can always catch the show on our podcast page, kxic.com. You could listen to past shows if you'd like and listen to this show. If you're just tuning in the, on the radio and you missed it, well, it's available on podcast. And we talked about the bull mastiff. We talked about diabetic alert dogs. Kind of interesting. Getting you ready for spring and a whole lot more. Ron, anything else you want to squeeze in about your store? Don't forget about our $5 nail trims. No appointments necessary. Just bring those vaccinations so that we can get a copy and have it on file for you. And then remember, buy 10, get one free on all of our dog and cat food. It's crazy. I just put signs up all over the place on the shelving units because somebody pointed out 
you don't even tell anybody about that. I'm like, all right, I'm going to change that. So uh, that's on all of our dog food. And we competitively shop our food, so they're competitively priced. Uh, so you're, it's not like you're paying more or anything for them. We get that reimbursement through the manufacturer. I have like pinned them to the ground and <laughs> bent their arm and said, you're going to do it. And then they give me the money. So um, it's a benefit to all of us. Uh, and the manufacturers love it. All right. Good deal. That's Ron Salzard. For Ron Salzard, I'm Jay Caper. And that's it. That's the Positive Petland Show. Bye.